Well, it's my great pleasure to um, invite Cathy Burns, President of the PMA, to present to us the first um, of a series of talks. Now, Cathy probably doesn't need too many introductions. Um, she has held many senior positions um, in the supermarket sector. She is very well versed in marketing, branding, um, and I think she's a wealth of information in terms of knowing what the trends are for, for us into the markets of the future. It's a thrill and honour to be with uh, all of you this morning. I come to you by route of the grocery retail industry. I spent 30 years uh, in grocery retailing, uh, 20 years at Hannaford, uh, which is a regional chain in the northeast, and 10 years at Food Lion, which is another regional chain in the southeast, and had the privilege of running the company the last three and a half years I was with them. And then got inspired to join the association world, uh, which has been fantastic. For those of you who don't know PMA, uh, we are the organization, a global organization, of which PMA A and Z was birthed uh, about six years ago, and Michael Worthington is the CEO of that, uh, that organization. So Michael uh, and Z have asked me to talk a little bit about what's happening in the marketing space as it relates to growers uh, and the opportunity to ultimately tell your story and uh, make some things happen with fresh produce, um, uh, certainly in Australia and New Zealand. So I'm going to share some stories, uh, a little bit about what's happening uh, in the States that hopefully will um, inspire you, if you haven't already, to take a few steps in the direction to talk about the great stories that you have. I'll start by saying a, a pretty glo glo trend we're seeing globally and driven in fair amount by technology is the whole issue of transparency. And uh, it doesn't matter what generation you're in, you want to know how your food is grown, where your food is grown, what are you doing to protect my food, how are you connected to the local community, and how can you make a, a you know a transparent connection with the consumers in which you um, in which you serve? And this uh, recent result from Nielsen uh, really tells the story about trust. And today, consumers are really curious about who can I trust? Who can I trust? You've got consumers going online to diagnose their medical conditions <laughs> by Googling it, right? And so they're constantly looking for ways to figure out who do I trust. And what's interesting is although uh, online communication in word of uh, communication still uh, makes sense and consumers are valuing that, word of mouth, as you see in these results, are still the number one marketing tool <laughs> that we have. If you think about going to a restaurant or going to a movie, how many of us go online and see what the reviews are? From people we don't even know. <laughs> but we want to know what the reviews are of that particular restaurant. So uh, recommendations from people I know is critically important. And so how do you define trust? How do you define transparency? Um, and recently we had uh, the research, one of our research partners is the Hartman Group. And they did a lot of research on transparency and trust. And here's what we found, is the opportunity for people to tell open and honest stories. Once again, I can't think of a better industry to be able to story tell. And the products that you have um, and the, the healthfulness of those products. And so who doesn't want to do business with a company that is open and honest? It's how do you tell that story? And as we dug into the, the research uh, a little more, this is, we actually said, okay, consumers, what are the key components of transparency? And this is what they were. Easy to find out where a company's product is made. Actually, if you look at the first four, they resonate very well with our industry and a huge opportunity. And actually, the bottom two. <laughs> You know, you're very active and proactively, uh, hopefully this doesn't happen, but if you have a recall, you're proactive, you're on it. Incredible, builds incredible trust with the consumer, especially if you communicate it in, in, in a way, in their channels, so that you're heard. Um, and that you make visible the standards that guide your business practices. 
So really trying to define and understand what transparency mean, what trusts mean, and what's so striking based on the research is if you're not telling your story, who's telling it for you? And if you look at the results of the research, how scary is this? Customers get their data about our industry most from consumer advocacy groups. And I will tell you, they're not always in our favor. <laughs> and so, again, who's telling your story um, if you're not? Certainly government agencies um, have a role in that in terms of storytelling, and that's really important. But only 16% of consumers look to companies to tell their story. What a huge opportunity. Consumers are getting information about you and your products from advocacy groups more than they are you. <laughs> so local, um, first of all, how do you define local, <laughs> right? Um, so the opportunity, again, that we've seen growing, and I understand it's growing in popularity here as well, is the whole idea of local, local hubs, farmers markets. Um, again, how does the consumer define local? What's interesting is I remember going to a farmer's market in Boston, Massachusetts in the middle of the winter. Um, so there's probably 10 feet of snow on the ground. And you go to a local's farmer's market and they're selling strawberries. Really. <laughs> you know, anywhere in the US, if anyone has bananas at a local farmer's market, where are these being grown? <laughs> Certainly not in the US. So the whole definition of local and what does it mean to be local and how do you tell your story about local is a trend, clearly. Um, and people are selling product out of the back of trucks. And um, so that raises a whole food safety issue. Uh, but consumers get inspired by local markets, local hubs, buying product out of the back of vehicles. And so once again, Proof from my perspective that marketing works. They get inspired by the connection, the local connection that they have uh, with their products. So uh, obviously there's the consumer trend of, of transparency and local, and there's you know obviously more trends, but what is definitely turning the tide is actually the change that's happening with the consumer. And the millennials are a part of that. Millennials are having kids. <laughs> It seemed like millennials were these like youngins. <laughs> they're having children and they're shopping. And uh, shopping obviously for fresh, fresh fruits and vegetables. So for those of you who are PMA members of ANZ, you have access to some really great research that we provide for free around millennials and as you'll see here, digital food life to really understand what's happening. And when I was in retail, I wish so badly I had taken advantage of some research like this. Um, as opposed to pull, um, paying people internally to try to do this research. So I would encourage you to take advantage of rich data, rich research that talks about the consumer trends and buying habits of millennials. But if you think you have millennials figured out, that's great. Look who's coming behind them, <laughs> Generation Z. The oldest of this cohort is 18 years old. So won't be long before they start having children. Um, and if you look at the research, once again, that the Hartman Group did, it would tell you that they're going to eat healthier. That's at least what they're saying. And their intention is to eat healthier. This is a group of um, kids <laughs> that are on all the time. And what the, the real challenge is, how do you engage them? Because one-way communication to this group is not going to work. They have so much coming at them. And once again, they're on all the time. How do you grab their attention? A big part of marketing is being disruptive, grabbing someone's attention, having a two-way dialogue that ultimately inspires them to buy all of your products. So these, uh, this is the next generation that, that's right upon us. Um, some great trends in terms of what they care about, certainly social causes, social responsibility, and it appears that they're going to eat healthier. We've got to take advantage of that as an industry. They're ripe and ready to get to, to ultimately get engaged with and then hopefully drive uh, the consumption of fruits and vegetables in that way. 
So if you were here earlier this week, um, Jeff Dunn from Bolthouse Farms used this exact same quote um, from Seth, Seth Godin. Marketing is no longer about the stuff that you make, but about the stories that you tell. I can't emphasize enough the opportunity this industry has to story tell. It's not just about um, the stuff that you make, and you make great stuff. <laughs> So you have great stories uh, to tell. So what I thought I would do is uh, share a few examples. Um, they are, uh, most of them are US based. There's one that's based out of Mexico uh, that looks at ways, uh, the first one is from Stemilt, a company that produces apples um, in Washington state. And uh, in two minutes, they tell their story, they tell their heritage, they talk about sustainability, and the pride in their product. So let's take a look. Simple, straightforward storytelling. It's all very genuine uh, to what they do and what they grow every day. Uh, the next one I wanted to show you is from Bolthouse Farms. Uh, they, they produce carrots. Um, they're based out of Bakersfield, California. And what we've talked a lot about at PMA is the opportunity to take what's working in other parts of the retail store, i.e. junk food, and how they market and steal a page out of the junk food, not healthy food, <laughs> book, and try to apply that to uh, fruits and vegetables. And um, let's take a look at how a carrot company did that in the US. Exciting snack, baby carrots don't come to mind. Like most veggies, baby carrots lay forgotten in refrigerator crispers across the world. Of course, junk food doesn't have that problem. So how do we get baby carrots out of the bottom drawer and get people crunching them just like junk food? Now in extreme junk food packaging. Now in chic junk food packaging. Now in futuristic junk food packaging. If you're gonna be like junk food, first, you've gotta look the part. Baby carrots junk food packaging officially hit the shelves in select test markets, driving double digit carrot sales in store. But junk food isn't just sold in grocery stores. So we made our own junk food vending machines. A New York high school is encouraging kids to get food out of the vending machine because that machine has baby carrots in it. Now some schools are finding a new way to dump the junk. And all baby carrots junk food packaging features a tout for the free iPhone app Extreme Crunch Cart, the world's first ever video game powered by crunching baby carrots into your iPhone mic. But you're not officially junk food until you've got your own over-the-top junk food commercials. Baby carrots, yeah, baby carrots, whoa, baby carrots. Baby carrots. Baby carrots. Baby carrots. Extreme impossible stunt. Baby carrots. Baby carrots. Extreme pterodactyl. Feel that feeling. You know the 
feeling. Overt sexual innuendo. Initiate crazy expensive special effects. Despite running in just two test markets to date, in Cincinnati and Syracuse, this $2 million campaign has garnered over 500 million PR impressions across the world. A high school in Ohio has installed an all-carrot vending machine. Has anybody ever called your penis a baby carrot? <laughs> oh, baby. So, Bolthouse's attempt to take something in the, the CPG like marketing world and apply it to something as simple as baby carrots. And the results, a 10% increase in baby carrot sales. Um, so the cool, fun, hip, sexy uh, marketing uh, connection uh, certainly worked for their case. Here's a, a softer angle uh, that Cuties uh, took. And lastly, if you watch the Super Bowl uh, this year, first ever produce ad in the Super Bowl came from avocados from Mexico. And here's the final one. With the next pick in the first draft ever, Australia selects the kangaroo. Yes. I like that pick. Get up, hops, jump, vertical. Brazil selects the sloth. Off the field issues. Mauritius selects the dodo bird. <laughs> And Mexico selects <gasps> the avocado. Great pick. Love it. Rich volcanic soil. Perfect weather. That'll make avocados from Mexico the ideal year-round snack. Avocados from Mexico. So avocados from Mexico spent a lot of money <laughs> to have a Super Bowl ad. Uh, first ever Super Bowl produce ad. Uh, in the history of the Super Bowl. And that last snippet at the end showed it went from a commercial to a social media application. 1.6 billion media impressions. Second in all of the um, Super Bowl commercials that happened at the last Super Bowl. So huge opportunity. So you may be sitting there saying, that's all fine and well, Kathy. If I had the money to spend on marketing like this, I'd do it. And um, so there obviously are other ways uh, to be able to access. Here's um, a, an opportunity to do something on social. And socials, in, you know, you've heard, if you've been here the last couple of days, it's inexpensive, it's an opportunity to express yourself, an opportunity to story tell. Bolthouse Farms, again, used some examples earlier this week. I wanted to show you one from Chiquita. Um, and so they're everywhere on social, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Again, engaging, engaging, engaging with consumers. They actually are in the process right now of trying to do a jingle. So they're getting consumers involved with creating a jingle and sharing that. And they have 9,000 followers on Twitter. So if you think about, you know, once they, if they, their follower retreats or shares, or I'm sorry, whatever the right language is, Carrie, you probably know this, uh, the opportunity to share that with their friends, you can just see the exponential communication marketing that can happen um, from a social, social media perspective. So huge opportunity there. You're familiar with these campaigns here, more so than quite frankly we are in the States. Um, you know, obviously uh, what Woolworths has done, Harris Farms won Marketer of the Year uh, last night, so you're well versed with the opportunity to change the way we think about what the consumers want. You know, we always think the consumers want the absolute perfect product, and some do, but there's also a contingent that are willing to pay less for maybe the in imperfect, imperfect product at a reduced price. Again, not for everyone, may not scale everywhere, but once, what it shows is that marketing works. When done well, marketing works. And I'll end with, um, again, I, I, don't, I can't stress enough, you have such great stories to tell. So what is your company's story for 2015? And how are you telling it? Or are you going to let consumer advocacy groups tell it? 
There's a huge, huge opportunity. And so as you think about you, yourself and your businesses, whether you're a farmer or a retailer, a grower shipper or a distributor, you have genuine, authentic stories to tell. 